This video tutorial will demonstrate the basic configuration setup of a Eurotherm NanoDAC 4 channel recorder using iTools. Now that you have just received your NanoDAC recorder, please begin by removing it from the box. Start by attaching a 110 volt AC line cord to the line, neutral, and ground terminals so that you can power up the NanoDAC. Also, please attach the NanoDAC to your local area network via a CAT5 patch cable. Stop. Please review episode number one and episode number two before continuing with this episode. First, we must open iTools by clicking on the iTools Engineering Studio icon on your desktop or by clicking Start, then All Programs, then navigate to the Eurotherm folder and click on the iTools Engineering Studio icon. Once iTools is open, click on the Scan button at the top of the iTools window. The Enable Background Scan pop-up window will appear. Click on the Scan from Device Address radio button. Set the permitted range from 1 to 1. Then click on the OK button. After a few seconds, the NanoDAC should be found and will begin to synchronize with iTools. Do not proceed until the synchronization has completed. First, let's begin by putting the NanoDAC controller into the configuration mode by clicking on the Access icon at the top of the iTools window. Next, you will see a pop-up window warning asking you to select Yes or No. At this point, just select Yes. Next, you will see another pop-up window asking you for the configuration passphrase. Enter 100, then OK. Please note that a yellow colored symbol with a wrench in it will be displayed on the NanoDAC picture at the bottom left corner of the iTools display as well as next to the NanoDAC communications address near the top left of the iTools window. This symbol is telling you that you are now in the configuration setup level. Double click on the instrument folder located on the left side of the iTools window. Now you will see all of the subfolders within the instrument folder listed vertically in the same window as well as listed horizontally across the main window of iTools. Click on the Locale tab in the main window of iTools. Here you will change the date format. For this demonstration we will choose the month, day, year format. Next select the proper time zone for your area. At the date of this video tutorial, we are at GMT minus 5 hours. Next, if you want to set up daylight savings time, do so at this time by selecting yes and entering the data requested for daylight savings time. Click on the clock tab. Ensure that the current date and time is correct. If not, change as necessary. Double click on the group folder located on the left side of the iTools window. Now you will see all of the subfolders within the group folder listed vertically in the same window as well as horizontally across the main window of iTools. Click on the trending tab and change the trending interval to your desired value. For this demonstration we will leave the trending value set at 10 seconds. Next, ensure that trending point 1 through 4 is set as channel 1 through 4 respectively. Click on the Recording tab. For this demonstration, leave the recording interval time at 10 seconds and the UHH file compression at normal. Based on these values in the standard internal flash memory size of 50 megabyte, you will see that the time until flash memory is full has been calculated at 250.96 days. Double click on the channel folder located on the left side of the iTools window. Now you will see all of the subfolders within the channel folder listed vertically in the same window as well as listed horizontally across the main window of iTools. Next double click on the one folder located on the left side of the iTools window. Now you'll see all of the subfolders within the one folder listed vertically in the same window as well as listed horizontally across the main window of iTools. Click on the main tab if not already selected in the main iTools window. Starting from the top, 
change the descriptor of this input channel to your desired description. For this demonstration, we will leave the descriptor at channel 1. Next, change the type of channel. For this demonstration, we will make all four input channels, type K, thermocouple inputs, scaled 0 to 1372 degrees Celsius with no decimal point display resolution. Next, click on the Trend tab. Here you can change the color of the pen representing this input channel on the faceplate of the NanoDAC. Let's change this color pen to red. Again, for this demonstration, we will not assign or configure any alarms for this input channel. Next, you can double click on Folder 2, Folder 3, and Folder 4, making all of the same changes that you just did in folder number one. Basically setting the channel as type K thermocouple input scaled 0 to 1372 degrees Celsius with no decimal point display resolution. Once again clicking on the trend tab and you can change the color of this pe uh, channel's pen to your desired color. And again for demonstration purposes we will not assign any of the alarms for any of the channels. At this point you have completed the basic configuration setup of your 4-channel NanoDAC data recorder using iTools software and are ready to install your NanoDAC into your control panel. Click on the access icon at the top of the iTools window to remove the NanoDAC from the configuration mode and back into the operation mode.